Hi everyone, um, this is Mira with Akendico, and as always, thank you for joining me today. Um, as you can see, I decided to start a new series of uh, webinars with a focus on uh, real scenarios, basically your projects, um, to give you an idea how Akendico can be utilized in different scenarios, how to approach your requirements, uh, which features of Akendico to use, uh, discuss the best practices, and many others. So, should you have any questions uh, during the presentation, feel free to use the question box and um, at the end um, of, the, of this presentation um, I'll go ahead and uh, try to cover all of your questions if there are some. So uh, without further ado, uh, let's jump into the scenarios that I prepared for this webinar. Um, so. Uh, within the first scenario, um, I'll try to compare uh, what are the differences between um, CMS and EMS uh, of Akendico when trying to implement a training program. I'll explain just in a second what that, what that stands for. And in the second scenario, uh, I'd like to actually improve uh, the Akendico repeater when it comes to paging. So I'm calling this implementation a jQuery repeater. So um, let's take a look into the first scenario, uh, what we want to achieve. So uh, basically, we're going to have some buyers uh, on a live site, so some visitors, and we wanted them actually to buy some kind of a, a training uh, product. So they put it into shopping cart, then uh, they're going to pay for that, and then once the order is actually paid into the candy code, we need to figure out uh, when this uh, actually happens. Um, we're going to start our own processor, some kind of an automation process that will send uh, materials to uh, those uh, those visitors, and um, the materials could be you know you could you could imagine that it could be some kind of a workout uh, materials or online training materials, uh, PDF documents uh, that they will need to actually follow some hands-on lab or um, this kind of uh, this kind of materials, and there's going to be obviously configuration because we want to start sending these uh, only when they pay the order right away, uh, and then after some some time, you know, after day or two days or three days, we're going to send a second uh, portion of, of those uh, materials. So there there would need to be some kind of a configuration in place when the materials are actually uh, being sent. So. Um, as usually, uh, when preparing some food, you need to have uh, uh, three, thi three things, basically. Um, some kind of a tools, ingredients, and recipe. So uh, tools, in this case, uh, could be Canico CMS or EMS. You need to choose the right one. And then ingredients could be considered Canico building features or uh, functionality. And then obviously a recipe is something, it's our guide, it's a step-by-step -step guide that we're going to use um, in order to, to achieve what we're looking for. And pretty much the recipe or um, the way how we do it, uh, it depends on uh, the tool that we have available and the features that we're going to choose. And my recommendation here is always to um, ask, for example, um, support, uh, technical support of a Candico consulting team, look into documentation, look up the forums, uh, ask your colleagues, so what would be the best practice um, in actually implementing what you're, what you're looking for. So let's start with the first option. So let's take a look on how we can do it uh, with the Candico CMS. So here are our ingredients. Obviously, we need to use the e-commerce solution, the e-commerce module. Um, we want to we wanna have some kind of a reporting saying, you know, how many uh, attendees or how many subscribers do we have uh, for the training currently. Uh, we'll utilize the newsletter module as well. Uh, there's going to be custom tables module involved, and we obviously need to write a custom schedule task, which will act as a, as a processor, automation, automation manager. Um, so probably you might be thinking that, um, all right, so there is a newsletter module in a system that could handle this kind of scenario, but in reality it cannot, um, because the way it works with the standard newsletter module is that you can schedule the emails to be sent or newsletters to be sent at certain times, so that's the first time, um, you know, um, day after that or week after that you could send another email, but um, in a newsletter uh, module we have some kind of a subscribers, and this subscriber could subscribe before the email is sent uh, or after, so we cannot address you know all of the subscribers 
So what we are looking for actually is that whenever uh, the newsletter subscriber is being uh, created, from that moment on we want to start sending him or her um, those kind of emails that we will predefine as a part of the newsletter module. So we need to tweak a bit the newsletter module and for that purpose uh, we're going to be using uh, our, our processor. So I'll jump into that just in a second. Um, so here is our recipe or step-by-step step by step guide. What we want to do, um, I'll go through these steps um, very briefly and I'll try to um, then show you the real example which is which is implemented in my case. Um, it looks a bit complicated but in reality it's very easy. So um, whenever the visitor comes to our website they will they are searching for some kind of a product and then they will add the product to the shopping cart. So once they pay uh, for the product uh, what we'll do is that we need to figure it out uh, like what's happening. We're going to do that in uh, Kenico or with support of Kenico e-commerce providers. So that's the first step that actually we need to customize the, the, the code of the Kenico e-commerce provider. Um, then we're going to assign um, that specific user to a newsletter and we need to know which newsletter uh, will be using. So that's why there needs to be connection between a product and newsletter because you could have a, a training program A and for that you might want to send um, newsletter A issues for B you, you want to you wanna send something else. So there needs to be a connection. Um, obviously then we want to have uh, some kind of a report uh, saying who is currently under the program so that we can see uh, those statistics and then there's going to be a custom schedule task uh, which will be actually uh, acting as our um, automation processor and uh, this will be this one will be actually looking into a subscriber table and newsletter table in order to figure out to which subscriber to send um, those kind of materials but then uh, we need to have some kind of a, a configuration saying which newsletter issue is sent at which time from the moment the buyer actually purchases uh, the product. So there's going to be a custom table involved in a Kendico CMS uh, implementation and then uh, we're using obviously built-in features of Kendico like um, sending via uh, Kendico email queue, um, the shopping cart itself, uh, the Kendico products, um, the reporting module and you know e-commerce payment uh, providers or payment gateways. So let's take a look on that. I'll go uh, step by step and show you the, the implementation. So uh, first of all, um, I'm gonna show I'm gonna show you the connection between my product and the newsletter. So in the system, um, I prepared uh, newsletters. So first of all, I'll go to the online marketing and newsletters. Um, and here I have for each of my products, I have different newsletter and for the content administrator training uh, that I want to sell on my on my website um, I have several issues and these represent actually my hands-on labs um, so as a part of these I'm sending materials PDF files and all of the supporting uh, information that the uh, buyer actually needs to follow in order to accomplish uh, that training and there is a connection between my products so I created the products I uh, created the training section and here I extended uh, the standard uh, Candico product object, so SKU object and I added my custom field which is actually connecting my product to that specific uh, newsletter in the system so that I can end up, end up with the connection in here and after the product is purchased I know uh, which to which newsletter I would like to subscribe my users. So that's why here I have a connection. So I created my custom field called newsletter and here I can select um, to which newsletters I want to I wanna actually relate my product. So that's the first thing uh, what I've done and then for the second thing I need to figure out when the order is paid. So let's actually go ahead and first of all purchase that product. So on a live site I'm going to go ahead and uh, add uh, for example this training content administrator into the shopping cart. I'll step through the uh, checkout process. I'll just go ahead and create new account. Um, so.
Okay, I'll do it like this. Okay, I'll fill some information here. Okay, great. So um, I don't really care about the payment provider or payment uh, gateway at this moment. I'm just I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, create the order. So after clicking this option, the order is created, but I didn't pay for the for the uh, for the order yet. So uh, in Kenico, um the way it's gonna look for me is with within the orders. I'm gonna see the the order, but uh, currently the order is not paid. So, in other words, uh, I should not see any uh, subscriber being actually subscribed to my newsletter. I just want to do it right after the order is paid in the system. So, I can simulate this by going into the order, um, into the billing section, and here I can check this option, order is paid. Uh, that will simulate pretty much the scenario as if uh, the, the order itself would be uh, in reality paid. So how do I approach these things? Um, so as you as you can see in here, I could use a Candigo e-commerce provider, uh, in which uh, I'll override one method to actually figure out whether the subscriber is um, or the, the order itself is paid. So I went ahead and within my app code I created a section within the CMS modules called Reward Examples One. And I'm keeping the structure like this because of the import-export. Um, so after this presentation, I'm going to just export whatever I have and hand it to you um, as a part of this presentation. Uh, so we will get the, the code examples um, right away all together with uh, whatever I'm, I'm uh, talking about. So here I um, override the Candico order info provider. And um, over then basically set order internal info in, internal method. Um, the code is not that important at this moment. The important part is that you can figure out when the order is actually paid. And then what you can do uh, within this, sec this section is that um, you can figure out um, what is the uh, field, um, what is the value of the newsletter field of my product. And based on that, you could access the newsletter and you could create a subscriber info out of the customer customer info which is part of the order and then you can subscribe the user to, to the newsletter so um, now I'm gonna just check this option order is paid and now my code is executed which means that within the online marketing newsletters I now see that a number of subscribers actually increased so um, now we're here in this section and you can see that uh, I was automatically subscribed to um, this newsletter which is great, so we pretty much uh, accomplished uh, this part in here. Um, now, there is, uh, we need to create a custom schedule task in a system which will act the, as an automation processor, which will send uh, those emails. And for that purpose, we need to have also configuration table. So first of all, let's take a look on the configuration table. Uh, so I created my own custom table for that purpose, so here. and. It's a very simple table. It just has a, uh, actually two uh, custom fields. So uh, connection to my newsletter issue, the GUID field. I don't want to use ID because um, if I use the import-export module or content staging, the ID uh, value could be changed you know, in different environments. So that's why I'm, I'm using GUID, which is a better option. Um, so connection to my newsletter issue, and then uh, I'm saying uh, what are the days from uh, the time when the user actually subscribed to this newsletter. So uh, I, I want to send the issue one, you know, after one day, issue two after uh, three days, issue three after five days, and so on. And so I'll, I'm basically allowing um, my administrator uh, to go to uh, or editors to go to CMS desk section where they can see this table and for each of those issues uh, based on uh, the selection they could say hey how many are the days uh, from the beginning um, of the subscription of the of the subscriber or buyer so I can go you know into detail and here I can see um, which is the um, newsletter issue and what are the days from 
uh, the subscription. So I can go ahead and create as many of these records as I as I need, but I need to be careful because um, I could I could simply introduce some logical issue in here. So that's my that's my configuration table. We're pretty much in here, and now let's take a look on the custom schedule task that we have in this in the system. So again, I went ahead and within the administration section, you go to uh, schedule tasks, and here I have my schedule task. Um, it's configured to send those emails uh, on an hour basis, so once per hour. It's sitting in app code. Uh, I'll show you the code just in a moment, and basically it's enabled, and I'm also improving the performance a bit by running the task in a separate thread. Um, you could even fine-tune the performance by running the schedule task outside of a, of a Candico as an external service. But I don't, I'm not doing this at this moment because um, in this case I would need to create a custom project, custom assembly, custom, you know, DLL file, and then over time if you uh, apply the hotfix or upgrade um, your Candico website, you would need to rebuild this, uh, this, this assembly or project with references to new Candico deal files. So I'm keeping it uh, very simple. The performance should be uh, fairly the same. So um, let's take a look on this schedule task, say implementation that's basically sitting in here in the same location. Um, I'm just following uh, the Candico documentation on how to create such schedule task. And what am I doing in it is that, uh, probably I'm not going to go through all of this, but what am I doing is that I'm uh, accessing all of the uh, subscribers within specific newsletters and then checking against the custom table uh, at which time I should be sending which uh, newsletter issues. And then once I send that email to uh, Candico email queue and um, the email queue is then handling um, the processing, then uh, I'm using custom data of the subscriber to actually mark that this email uh, or this newsletter issue was already sent uh, to this subscriber. So um, somewhere here in a, uh, in a system, uh, I'm actually uh, populating uh, subscriber custom data field, which is prepared for customization uh, with the value of the newsletter or newsletter issue that was already sent. Um, so I'm not sending it uh, again over and over. Um, and yeah, so we can go ahead and try to run uh, the scheduled task. So I don't want to wait for one hour. Uh, I'm just going to force that actually uh, to run. So at this moment, um, it's configured to send the first email after you know zero zero days, uh, so basically it should it should send it uh, at the time when the schedule task is is run. So we can verify that if I go to um, email queue of a Candico, uh, in this case uh, I should see an email being sent to uh, that person. So that's basically first hands-on lab uh, with information on what should I do regarding the uh, the purchase training. So I'm not going to receive this email anymore. I'm going to receive the second email after, um, I believe that's the one, after three days. Um, so um, this would be implementation from CMS perspective. Uh, I also want to have, obviously, some kind of a report saying how many of uh, these attendees uh, or students do I have for my training? So I went ahead and created my own uh, report uh, where I have a filter depending on which newsletter I want to address. I can see uh, the results. So I have one attendee as a part of my uh, newsletter, and that's that. That's basically the email of the attendee. I, um, this is something that is not very complicated. So I wrote my own. Uh, SQL script to get the data out of the database. The, the data is there. Um, you need to just create a report according uh, your needs. So, um, as you're seeing, pretty much we've covered this scenario uh, regarding the uh, training program. Uh, it's not something which is, you know, uh, too hard to implement for experienced developer. Uh, it will take some time, obviously, to set up things, think about uh, the solution. 
Uh, but uh, when we talk about the result, what we achieved here, so we need to create a custom scheduled task, obviously, the code of it. Um, we, we used a custom e-commerce uh, providers um, to check whether the order was paid, create this custom uh, report uh, with our own SQL query. And then we just configure the, uh, the, the e-commerce solution with the products, newsletter, we create those, and we create custom tables. So um, this, you know, uh, there wasn't any, any programming involved in this. Uh, from perspective of uh, usability and future uh, extendability, um, the way it works in this scenario is pretty much we would need to uh, write our own custom code where we want to extend this uh, solution because uh, core of this um, implementation is achieved with custom code. And the way I don't like uh, or what I don't like about this solution is the way that uh, the user um, is separating basically configuration table uh, of uh, the newsletter um, from the newsletter itself uh, and the whole automation process. So um, it's not that easy to see like uh, which newsletter issue is sent at which time. They could simply introduce some logical issue when, when configuring these things. So um, that's from this perspective. And uh, when it comes to performance, that depends on many factors. So um, execution interval of our scheduled task. If you run it uh, too often, we could, um, you know, run into performance issues. So, depends how often or how crucial this is for you. Um, I would run uh, the task from external, uh, as an external service, if you want to improve the performance or um, use the, uh, the the separate thread option. Um, we want to make sure that our code is actually optimized, uh, even for um, high load websites or uh, websites with a lot of uh, clients or a lot of um, customers. Um, and then obviously uh, it's a really good idea to uh, run some, some load tests. So don't expect from me um, to give you some numbers how this solution actually performs uh, because it really depends on, on many factors. Um, I'm actually talking about uh, this example because uh, I've been working with one of our clients or basically one of our partners for Front Digital from Australia. They implemented the Kivia website. So um, what I presented so far is pretty much uh, almost the same scenario that they are using on their website. So whenever you go to their website, you register, um, you subscribe to receive um, notification emails um, about some help program. And um, besides the fact that I'm using the extra e-commerce module, in their case, they were using a BIS form or online form uh, module to register uh, or create a subscription mechanism. But uh, otherwise, it's basically uh, pretty much the same. Um, they're currently running on a version uh, 6 of a Candico. Um, and I'll get back to this later on. Um, but now, at this moment, I want to talk about uh, the same scenario, but from perspective of Candico EMS, uh, whether we could do it uh, in different way. Well, in this case, we're going to have um, ingredients, uh, which is going to be the e-commerce solution, uh, newsletter module, and instead of the custom table, schedule task, uh, reporting, and those kind of things, we want to use uh, Candico online marketing uh, and with its marketing automation um, feature. So. Um, Let's take a look on what we need to do. Um, so after the order is actually paid, uh, everything is pretty much the same, but after the order is paid, uh, we're going to check uh, from EMS uh, world perspective activities, and we're going to check whether the activity uh, was performed for a purchase of some product. This will trigger our marketing automation process uh, where we have a visual designer so we can design the whole process on our own. So administrator or marketer could set, set this up and then that's it. Um, so I suspect no custom code in this case, no programming at all um, and it should be fairly easy to set this up. So let's take a look on that, how this can be achieved. So um, I'll go to online marketing First of all, I need to actually go ahead and enable the online marketing itself because currently it's disabled and we need to make sure uh, we're or it's enabled. And here I have uh, my own processes. So I created one process per 
um, one product. So if I'm selling, uh, you know, content administrator training, I'm going to create one process for that. I have actually three versions of it at this moment. I'll explain why do I have that uh, just in a second. And for uh, another type of training, I have another process. So let's take a look on the first one. Uh, what I'm doing is that I am running this process um, always as a new instance. So if you purchase, um, let's just say, a product, and then two days after that you purchase the same product, uh, I want to run the, the process um, twice for you. Not only not only once. Uh, but, you know, that depends on your implementation. I choose uh, this option. So what's the most important part here is a trigger. So basically we are in here. So we need to set up a trigger which says whenever the order is paid and whenever the content administrator training product is purchased at that given time we'll start this marketing automation process. So uh, again there are predefined activities um, um, available in the online marketing. So activity type for me is going to be purchase a product and condition says contact has purchased a product content administrator. So here's a really nice uh, macro rule designer um, where you can drag and drop these um, sort of like a sentences uh, which are configurable for you or you, you can even write your own code but for marketers uh, it's easier to actually set up these rules well, this rule designer. So I have this trigger and then uh, the logic behind my automation is sitting on a step step um, where I'm starting the the, uh, the whole automation process by going into first wait step. So um, here I can configure um, how much time do I need until I receive the first uh, newsletter issue. So in my case I set it up to be one day. Um, so then I'm sending them a newsletter issue. Um, then I'm waiting for another, um, another, let's just say, two days. Yeah, another two days. Sending some newsletter issue. Again, I'm waiting for another uh, day or so. And again, sending some hands-on lab and, and so on. So um, let's actually do that once again. I'm logged in as some user, but you know I could be public user. So let's go to training section, and uh, I'll, I'll again purchase this content administrator training. All right, all right, okay, um, okay. So now at this moment within the online marketing, a uh, new contact is being created obviously uh, with all of its activities uh, performed. So we can go ahead and check those activities. Uh, one of those should be a purchase uh, product. So I'll go to activities. Um, so you can see purchase uh, for the order and I purchase a specific uh, product. So now at this moment, um, the system will start this marketing automation process for me and we're going to see that there are some contacts under my uh, process so you can see and you can go into detail and see in which um, exact step the person is actually uh, currently sitting so um, he's waiting one day until he receives the first email and then the other one etc um, so fairly easy actually to uh, set up or implement, but um, there is a slight issue here, and uh, that's basically with the activity um, which is called a purchase product. So this activity, building activity in a system, is not performed or not actually um, created after the order is paid, but it's uh, it's it's actually logged whenever the order is saved into into the database, meaning that uh, we really don't know whether the order was paid for or not. So we want to do it the way that we're going to start this marketing automation process or send generally those emails only when the order is paid. So that's why I have another version uh, of uh, my automation process version 2 and here I slightly modify uh, this one so I'm introducing a condition step 
and uh, within the conditions tab, uh, pretty much I'm checking whether the order was paid for. So um, here you can see contact has paid for a product content administrator. So um, this is a condition that I'm checking once per an hour. So here I have wait step, and uh, if the order itself is paid for, then I'm moving the the client to the uh, to the next step. Um, so the trigger itself is pretty much the same, so I'm keeping the same trigger. Um, but now if I go to contacts and I'll show you in which uh, step uh, the client is uh, is currently sitting, you see uh, the order uh, was paid for because uh, with the same client I, I paid uh, for the previous order. So um, that's that's actually the implementation. But I could, I could walk you through the example once again and you will see that the, uh, the, the, the client would be sitting in this waiting for payment step. And only in case the condition is met, uh, I would go through this order is paid step uh, to, the, to the next one. But previously we've seen that I paid for, for the order. Um, so this is one way of how you could uh, implement the things, or we could do it uh, the proper way uh, from performance perspective, meaning that I want to trigger the whole marketing automation process only in case really the order is paid. I don't want to start it and check whether it was paid. I want to start it right away only after the order is actually uh, being paid for. So I have another version in here. and. Um, in this version, uh, this implementation is pretty much uh, the same as with the first one, but now we have a different trigger. So now the trigger says activity product training paid perform. So there is no such activity in the Canticle uh, building activity, uh, which says that the product was paid uh, for. Um, so what I've done is that I created my own custom activity. So new activity type, and I call this one uh, product training paid. And um, I want to actually uh, log this activity whenever the order is paid. So pretty much I'm using the same uh, scenario as previously with uh, Kentico uh, e-commerce handlers. And in the same location that I was using previously, whenever the order is being paid for, uh, in this case, I have a section to uh, create a marketing automation activity or activity generally um, with my own type. So um, what's happening at this moment is that if I go back to my processes, to the third version, um, you will go to uh, contact. And you see at this moment um, that there is no contact currently running under this automation process. And that's because um, no one actually uh, was able to fulfill my trigger yet. But um, if I go to the e-commerce uh, section and to my orders, and if I try to pay for this order, let's do that. So I'll go to billing and simulate the payment. Now, at this moment, um, I'll go back to online marketing and processes. Now, I should be uh, running under the third version. So, you see that um, there is another user here because for that user or for the contact, I logged an extra activity. So, now you see um, that there is a extra activity called product um, was paid for. So that's activity type. So that's something, an extra that I build uh, with, the, with the custom code in order to match, match my uh, requirements. But it was not, not something complicated. So a couple of lines code, code and, and that's it within the right spot. Um, so pretty much I can cover uh, this scenario um, like this with the, with the EMS. Um, and what EMS gives you um, is a reporting, so I don't need to write my own report saying, uh, please give me all of the attendees within certain 
uh, steps that received um, this newsletter issue uh, because I have a reporting uh, built in into uh, the automation process and I can see all of the um, contacts currently under my process uh, and I can see which steps are they currently in so um, this is something that I saved uh, a lot of uh, time effort and money on uh, because it's already built in alright so when we uh, take a look on the result of the EMS here um, pretty much I've done only configuration here so I created my marketing automation process uh, configured newsletters I configure my products, uh, put everything together, uh, no code required at all. Um, I use custom code only in special scenarios, um, but in reality I was able to um, achieve for this scenario without you know touching Visual Studio or so. Um, I really like the usability of this solution because uh, it's easy to change, it's easy, easy to redesign, you can add new steps to your automation process, send extra hands-on lab or something like that within a couple of seconds. And there is a visual editor so uh, you can see what you're doing actually. Whereas with the, with the CMS, um, it requires an extra uh, thinking like, hey, here I have a custom table, here I have something else, so put everything together. Um, in order to create a big picture. And from the performance perspective, here it depends only on number of uh, subscribers and different products that I have because I don't have any, any custom code. Um, so Kenico is creating um, system uh, schedule tasks for a wait or timeout step. Um, so depends how many, how many um, of those subscribers um, you have running under um, this system schedule task at the time. I don't think so that there's going to be like, uh, you know, several of these of these customers uh, registered or buying the same product at the same time, um, in which case uh, you wouldn't run into uh, performance issues. Um, all right, great. So hope you can see now the difference between uh, how you could achieve these things in a in a EMS and and CMS, and um, I've talked to the partner that I was presenting uh, before, and they would definitely go for the EMS um, automation process if at that time uh, when they were creating this solution, uh, the marketing automation feature would be available, but uh, it wasn't available in version six at the time. Um, so they would spend, they would, um, they would basically save a lot of time, effort uh, when developing a scenario like this. Okay, great. Um, now, hope that makes sense. Uh, let's jump into second scenario. And in the second scenario, I want to talk about um, functionality or um, you know feature that I call a jQuery repeater. So. Recently, I came across uh, several clients actually asking me to help them to improve user experience or experience of their visitors, improve the page load time, um, etc. And what I noticed is that they were using uh, a lot of web parts uh, with the paging enabled. So it got me thinking that um, what is happening behind the scene, under the hood, and um, I want to share my ideas here with you. So what we want to do is that we want to uh, de um, well, basically decrease uh, waiting time, uh, improve the user experience, and uh, since uh, these days, you know, uh, client computers are really powerful machines, why not to offload some server-side processing and move it to the client instead of the uh, server itself? So we want to prevent unnecessary communication, uh, the overhead, uh, data that is sent with a standard HTTP request, um, basically transfer less data in raw format and let the client actually build uh, the HTML code. So when we take a look on standard scenario with the paging, the way it works, um, or generally the communication, is that the client wants to uh, display some page, obviously, so the client asks the server to get the page, the server is responding, hey, here is your HTML code, and then the client needs to actually download also the page resources like JavaScript, images, CSS, and etc. So there is a lot of communication going on. And whenever uh, you're having a pager, so with the scenario 
A, for example, here, the standard pager, you click on a second page, and again, the communication, the same communication pretty much is happening. So you're asking server uh, to get uh, the page for uh, page two. Again, server is responding, hey, here's the HTML code. Then you're getting, again, resources. Those could be obviously cached on client side, so, um, but still, there is a lot of communication going on. Uh, so if you want to improve this, um, this option, uh, I would go for option B and C. I'll explain just in a second. And uh, we want to basically, in an option B, we want to only refresh a portion of our page, not the, not the whole page itself. So imagine that we want to uh, have a pager for uh, this kind of product in here and go to the second page. So we want to receive only this portion of HTML code. So actually, Candico has a, a feature uh, which we call uh, Ajax Update Panel on top of our web parts and, and zones. So what you can do is that you can go ahead and um, for your, um, let's just say, news list repeater, if you have uh, such with the paging, um, you can go ahead and within the settings of it, you can enable the um, update panel option. So let me just do that. And uh, we're going to see that um, we'll, we'll save a lot of resources because the whole page uh, would not need to be uh, refreshed, only the portion portion of it. So once I enable that, just wait for a second, I'll go to Ajax section and check this option, use update panel. Let me just open uh, this page on uh, the live side so that we can see how it actually behaves. I'll close this one. And now if I navigate through uh, these individual pages, you see how quick it is. Uh, so the rest of the page, like this header and a footer, is not being refreshed, only this portion it is. So it's basically a um, really good option uh, to do a paging with the Cadico built-in features. Um, but still, in this case, what's happening is that the server is actually prepared, preparing the HTML code for you and then uh, just serving you uh, the whole HTML code. So what we want to do is that we want to in the last scenario, we want to ask the server just to get a raw data in a raw format, and then we want to build the HTML code on a on a uh, client side. So even improve the performance, um, fine tune the performance. So that's why the idea of having a jQuery repeater. So what we want to do, um, or what we need actually, we need a jQuery library, obviously. Um, then we need a REST service of a Candigo to receive um, the data in a row format, JSON, XML or so. Uh, we'll use a Candigo API in a form of custom web part. And then we'll also utilize a jQuery transformations, which actually equal to jQuery templates. All right. Um, so um, here is how it's, how it's going to work, actually. So we'll create a custom web part that will register, first of all, jQuery library on the page. Then the custom web part will generate um, Ajax um, call method that is capable to access the Candico REST uh, service based on specific URL. So it's going to be rendered as a part of the HTML code. And we're going to render also jQuery template or, tr or transformation. So imagine that this is all the web part does, and it will render it into the HTML code of the page, but still we don't have any content yet, right? So the, the, the location or spot that we want to fill is empty. So then the client itself will ask the server to get um, raw data by this uh, Ajax call, and the rest service will uh, return a JSON response, and then we'll use a jQuery uh, template or generally a Candico jQuery transformation in order to build the HTML code. And then if we if we step through the second page, uh, the same is happening, but now we're going to get um, data from, uh, let's just say, pages 6 to 10 instead of the 1, 1 to 5 this time. So um, let's take a look on that, how this can be implemented. So I went ahead and prepared a custom web part called jQuery Peter. And first of all, I want to show you how that's going to work. So let's go to LiveSite. 
And here I can see uh, that this uh, repeater, uh, jQuery documents repeater, is pulling data from a uh, new section, and I set up the paging to be uh, one per page or one item per page. And then I have a load more button. If I click on that, uh, Candico is serving me uh, the next page. I have, a, I have another, um, or I can, you know, step through all of these items by clicking load more and move back and forth. Uh, this is one way of doing things, like you, you can replace the content, but the web bar itself supports also the option to add the HTML code to the page. So I have here a property which says paging type, and I could say that I want to add the HTML code uh, to the page. So in reality, instead of uh, back and forth buttons, I'm going to have only load more button. So I'm clicking on load more, load more, load more, up until I'm uh, out of the out of the items to to display, and if we take a look on the communication itself, so I could start, for example, Fiddler. Um, so after clicking on this option, load more. There's going to be only one request to the server uh, for the uh, REST URL, and this is returning me a JSON. Um, JSON response, so I'm getting only the data that I need. So a few like new summary, news title, and no alias pad in order to create a URL. And uh, pretty much the the code itself contains. If if I show the code itself, it contains um, jQuery uh, template or jQuery transformation, according to which. Um, the JavaScript is capable of uh, rendering the received JSON data. So uh, the only thing that the web part actually renders is this template, and then there is also um, supporting um, JavaScript code that actually um, ensures the communication between the client and the server. So that's it. Um, nothing else is is going on besides the fact that you register the uh, jQuery library and jQuery template library, um, but that's that's basically it. and the code itself is also um, uh, is also minified, so I'm not uh, transferring a lot of a lot of data. Um, so fairly easy solution. Um, the REST service for documents allows us to use pretty much all of the features like a standard repeater. So that's why I could go into configuration of the jQuery repeater and set up all of the standard properties like um, document type, um, um, then location of my documents like path, order by, where condition, top end, columns. So all of these are exposed to you. Feel free to use them. And then uh, I have a jQuery transformation. So if I show you, um, this is how you actually write the uh, jQuery transformation. And it's very similar to any other transformation, but use a different expression to evaluate your field uh, fields on a, on a client side. So this is how I can access the news uh, summary field when it's returned from the server uh, in, a, in a JSON format. So um, nothing complicated about. Uh, I'm going to hand you as well the code for this jQuery repeater. Feel free to share uh, your um, feedback or ideas about that. But um, there are some actually issues with it. And since this is happening on a client side, like I mean the whole processing, what's going to happen if the JavaScript is uh, disabled on a on a client browser? Well, we are talking about a group of uh, one to at most I believe two percent of uh, live site visitors with disabled JavaScript statistically uh, proven. So, but depends. You know, if you have uh, one thousand visitors, you know, um, one or two percent is not much. But if you have millions of visitors, uh, that amount of uh, uh, people like uh, visitors could could uh, could be really important to you. Um, so if JavaScript is disabled, disabled in this case, um, nothing is rendered uh, into the page. Uh, so what you can do in order to improve um, this this functionality is that you can at least on a server side render the first page. 
So you can do a combination of the standard repeater and the uh, jQuery repeater and render the first page uh, on a server side and any other page will be rendered uh, on a client side and in case the JavaScript is disabled, you know, there's not going to be any other page. Um, the second thing is um, that, for example, the internet crawlers or bots, uh, they usually cannot handle the JavaScript itself. So whenever they're indexing content of our pages, apparently for them, uh, the HTML code is going to be, you know, in that location partially empty because there is no content yet. Um, so in order to actually address uh, such scenario, what we can do is that uh, for our jQuery repeater in our code, uh, we could have a some kind of a switch saying, do I want to use the jQuery repeater or do I want to use the server-side repeater? And with the support of content personalization, I could create a ch two variants of my web part, one uh, which is addressing generally craw crawlers and one that is uh, working with the standard visitors. So what I've done in here is that my jQuery repeater has a property called use server-side processing. So if I check this option uh, in a code of that repeater, of the jQuery repeater standard candy core repeater will be used instead of the jQuery repeater. So that's implemented by the web part itself. And then on top of that, I created a two variants of uh, this specific jQuery repeater. And the second one, so if I show you, um, the second variant of it, uh, or generally the, the, the whole web part itself has a personalization variant or condition here saying um, that if the current uh, device is crawler, crawler um, in this case it's going to use a server side repeater. So the second variant of this jQuery repeater is configured with this option, use server-side processing with condition uh, to check if it is a crawler. And for the first variant um, of the same web part, I'm not using that property. So um, use server-side processing is actually uh, disabled in this case. But um, in order to be able to use this condition, current device uh, is crawler, you need to have uh, that premium XML file from uh, 51 uh, Moby Decrease, um, um, you know, solution that is in, uh, in the system. Um, so, um, pretty much, uh, this is about the implementation of the jQuery repeater. Just to let you know, it support um, all of the authentication uh, models that the REST service actually gives you, the forms, basic, and as well the hash. So it's up to you which one you want to use. Um, it is looking into your uh, settings uh, that, that are set in a site manager. Um, but here you can also use the option to use the authentication hash for the basic um, authentication type you need to define username and password that you want to use in order to get the data out of the system for forms authentication. You don't need to do that. So um, all of this is uh, is being uh, configured by the settings of the of the web part. Um, all right, so hopefully you like the, the jQuery repeater. Um, after this presentation, I'll make it available for you. For the next partner webinar uh, regarding these wor real world uh, examples, um, feel free to share your ideas, your story with us. Uh, I'll be actually really happy to uh, go through your scenarios and present them or, you know, um, uh, prepare that as a part of the uh, next webinar. So feel free to do that. Um, here's my uh, contact information if you want to, if you want to uh, contact me. And um, if you have any questions uh, regarding what you've seen so far, um, now it would be the right time actually to ask. I'll give you a couple of minutes. If you have some, some ideas, some feedback, um, or something wasn't clear for you, um, I could address these questions at this moment.
All right. So, um, as far as I can see, um, there are no questions at all. So, hopefully, it was uh, clear enough. Um, all right. So, um, in this case, thank you for your time. Um, I was uh, really happy to present uh, this topic to you. And again, as I said, if you have uh, any concern, any questions or so, feel free to approach me. Uh, I'll be happy to present your projects uh, next time. So, thank you for your time. Enjoy uh, the rest of the day, and I'll talk to you later.